Indeed, all our thoughts are with uh, the women of Ukraine on International Women's Day, uh, and indeed with all the people of Ukraine, because they're being killed, they're being indiscriminately killed throughout the country right now. On a street in Irpin, a family with two children fleeing war with everything they had in their suitcases were killed by Russian shelling as they tried to get to safety. In Sumy last night, Russian airstrikes killed 18 people, including two children. On Sunday, the world witnessed the death of Kirill Yatsko, an 18-month-old boy fatally injured by shelling in Mariupol. President Zelensky confirmed this morning that in the same city, a child had died from dehydration, with the water and all of the supplies cut off to that city by the Russians. We must not turn our eyes away to what Russia is perpetrating on the Ukrainian people. The UN has confirmed that the number of refugees fleeing the Russian war against Ukraine has already exceeded two million people. And we're all aware that this is a humanitarian crisis that hasn't been seen in Europe since the Second World War. The Irish people have responded with urgency and with generosity, and they're full of practical ideas on how to address the crisis. And indeed, Tishik, it must be said, I think you went some way to capturing the mood of the nation on Friday night on the Late Late Show. But capturing the mood of the nation and actually delivering in this house and delivering for the refugees coming from Ukraine are going to be two different things. Estimates of 100,000 refugees coming to Ireland have been put forward. Uh, and that's going to be a task for this country, a task for this government, and indeed a task for all of us in this house to ensure <coughs> that we deliver on all areas, in housing, education, health, for everyone that comes to our shores. But can you confirm, Tisha, has the UK government or the Home Office raised any concerns with you or your government about our own policy towards accepting refugees. In another area, while we can't condone the lorry crashing into the gates of the Russian embassy, I think we could all understand what literally drove it. The government, your government, have so far decided not to expel the Russian ambassador, but we must recognise that their embassy is now a tool of the Russian war effort. There are 31 staff known to be working in the Russian embassy here. That's reportedly a third more than the UK, where there is 22. There's only 10 in the Russian embassy in Poland, 12 in Germany, 19 in France. Why, Tisha? Why are so many Russian embassy staff here when we don't have strong trade or cultural links? And finally, our Magnitsky bill is being held up by government red tape. But can you confirm what Russian assets, if any, have been seized by the, Russia, by the Irish government in the last couple of weeks? So, Tisha, has the UK raised any concerns with Ireland over how many refugees that we are planning to take? Why has Ireland so many Russian diplomats? And will you now expel those that are surplus to maintaining basic diplomatic uh, uh, channels? And what Russian assets, if any, have been seized by the Irish state? First of all, I want to thank the Deputy um, for, for raising this key issue and, 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 and for his comments on a number of issues that, that, that spring from it. Um, and in the first instance, as I've said to you, um, the, and I mentioned earlier the bravery of journalism. Without journalists in battle, we wouldn't have any picture at all in terms of the atrocities that are being committed, the war crimes that are being committed by an evil regime that clearly targeted women and children. And uh, I mentioned uh, Lindsay Adario's photo photograph that captured that family that was, that was leaving and got uh, uh, mowed down um, as they were leaving um, a war zone. And um, the, we have to continue to shine a light on such atrocities. Uh, and in terms of the government's response and the people of Ireland's response, um, we're very, very clear. We work with the European Union. And working with the European Union, one of the first things was we gave visa-free um, uh, uh, travel um, accommodation and facilitation, which was the first time ever that was used by the European Union, which, an, which is an illustration of the gravity of the situation. Um, so an, essentially, Ukrainians can come into Ireland fleeing a war zone and can avail of all the rights of residency, access to healthcare, access to education, um, access to accommodation. Um, and other um, issues. What that means for us domestically is we do have to, and this morning the government discussed this, there will have to be, in the context of such a crisis as we're now experiencing, and it's a crisis of the duration, we're not sure of, of how long, uh, we will have to take steps uh, to circumvent normal approaches to provide uh, the level and scale of accommodation that will be required. Uh, and also to match that with access in particular to childcare and to education. 
it will be an enormous challenge, uh, the scale of which we've never um, dealt with before. And um, the, the pledge, the, 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 the register pledge that the, the Minister for Children, Roger Gorman, has initiated, has already um, received um, incredible response from across the country. Uh, the government is meeting on a weekly basis, the Secretary General is chairing meetings of all sec gens to make sure every department works in a coordinated way um, in terms of this crisis. Uh, and the key will be to move as fast as we can to deal with the numbers that are coming in on a daily um, basis. We estimate over 2,200 have now arrived um, in Ireland. Uh, also access, of course, all will have access to social protection, uh, social uh, welfare incomes and so forth, which is important. Um, and um, that work is underway. So a lot has been done in a very, very short space of time. We've allocated 20 million in humanitarian supports to go to established agencies in the UN, or UNICEF and others, uh, Irish Red Cross, to deal with the crisis on the ground, close to the borders, in terms of vital supplies. And we stand ready uh, in terms of any additionality we need to do at that level, uh, and also in terms of any response in terms of uh, experienced or expert personnel to go to various situations to assist our colleagues within the European Union. On the embassy issue, we cannot condone what happened yesterday. That's a completely contravention of the Vienna Convention. In our view, it's wrong. It, uh, embassies all over the world in different locations must be allowed to operate in safety. Uh, and I think that's, that's uh, and the, our decision, we will work in unison with our EU colleagues in relation to all issues to do with sanctions and measures to be taken in response to the, to, to the Russian aggression. ...of the anger that many people are feeling. So, Tishuk, have you asked the Russians why they need so many people working in their embassy in Ireland, given their lack of cultural or economic links? What level of contact has there been with the UK in relation uh, to uh, the taking in uh, of refugees. And in relation to what's needed practically, uh, uh, Tishuk, like we, like I, I had a man contact me this morning. He uh, is owner of one of six houses in Enfield in County Meath who is willing to give them over uh, for, for this effort. Um, so, you know, where can he go? The, you know, the pledge site isn't exactly ready for that level of, of offer yet. But these are very real practical offers. But Rachel Diallo from Carlo was, Carlo was studying medicine in Summy State University, Tishuk. She spent the last week hiding a, in a bunker at a hostel uh, as Russian shelling intensified. Through the help of two volunteer drivers, she's managed to make it to the border. Hopefully, she can make it over the border and make it home to safety. But what is going to happen to her medical studies? She's studying to be a doctor. So what can we, these are the practical responses we need as a state for our citizens and for the refugees coming here. It's not just housing, it's going to be education, it's going to be childcare, it's going to be everything. So what Thank can we do for the likes of Rachel and everyone else coming here? Uh, Tishuk. In relation to the numbers at the Russian Embassy, no, I haven't asked uh, in, in terms of the numbers there, but beyond, beyond no illusions, we have about six in Moscow, uh, three diplomats. Um, any actions means reciprocal actions on the other side. Diplomatic channels we judge to be necessary to retain right now in terms of pro uh, protecting and having channels to help Irish citizens in particular situations. You've just mentioned the young student Rachel in respect of endeavouring to flee from Ukraine. Channels must be kept open as a matter of pragmatism uh, and as a matter of protecting citizens, but also in terms of keeping channels open in terms of raising issues uh, that we are concerned about, uh, notwithstanding the, the appalling provocation from earlier statements from the embassy in respect of they're never going, there was never going to be an invasion, there was never going to be a war, and we saw how false uh, uh, and untrue uh, those um, statements were. In relation to the United Kingdom, my understanding is there has been discussions between the Home Secretary and the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntry, uh, and we've pointed out to the UK uh, that we're part of a European Union-wide response in terms of waiving uh, visa requirements, it's a humanitarian response, um, you, and that, that will continue to be our position um, in respect of uh, prioritising the humanitarian response above and beyond anything else.